Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Rarities, conductors making excellent recordings outside of their usual comfort zone, let's just call it, or the stuff that they're known for. And today's rarity is Colin Davis's recording of Mahler Fourth. When was the last time you heard about that one? But I remember when this came out. Now, Colin Davis, as we all know, is not best known for Mahler. In fact, he recorded very little Mahler. In fact, he sort of recorded like this, mostly. I mean, he did Das Lied von der Erde with Jesse Norman and John Vickers, which was, you know, pretty, pretty not special. But this is terrific. It's with the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra. And, you know, Colin Davis was a wonderful conductor, but he's best known for Berlioz, Sibelius, Mozart, Stravinsky, those those things. Some English music like Tippett is fabulous. Not Mahler. I don't know why he didn't do Mahler. You know, he would have been very good at it. Usually people who do Berlioz well also do Mahler well, for example, or even Tippett, who was all over the place in terms of eclecticism. I mean, Davis, you would think, would have responded to that. But I admire the guy nonetheless, because he did the stuff that he did, and some of it, uh, you know, extraordinarily well, as well as anybody ever had. He certainly did not need Mahler to make his reputation. Absolutely not. But this is a thoughtful and very, very fine Mahler for. It's certainly idiomatic for the most part, but it has some very interesting ideas as regards tempo and accent and phrasing and stress and how the tension is distributed and what it's done. Um, the soprano soloist in the finale is Angela Maria Blasi, who's perfectly fine. And the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra, of course, knew this music because they did it all with Kubelik. Remember him? Raphael Kubelik. So they certainly had a Mahler tradition, um, an important one and a valid one. And this sounds nothing like Kubelik. Nothing at all like Kubelik, actually. It's quite different. You know, Kubelik was a Czech conductor and had sort of a Czech conductor's feel for woodwind sonority. And his Mahler performances were, were rather fleet and lean and, and you know, almost, almost neoclassical in spirit in some respects, particularly the fourth, which was one of his best performances. But this, this is completely different. This is much more the sort of late romantic, getting close to the second Viennese school, decadent Mahler. It doesn't swoon. It's not slushy in that sense, but it is extremely emotional. It has a real almost heart on sleeve character in some, in some cases, which is in some moments, which is entirely appropriate. I might add the second subject of the first movement, parts of the adagio, which is gorgeous, by the way. The adagio is almost 24 minutes. It's extremely slow and extremely hushed and beautifully intense. And Davis sustains it marvelously. And the sonics are great. This was a co-production with Bavarian Radio. Um, the total timing is an hour, exactly an hour. Um, the finale also, nine minutes and 44 seconds. These are, it's, it's a measured performance for the most part, but full of contrast and color and, and it's just beautiful. I just played it again. I, I, you know, I hadn't heard it in a long time before I was, you know, I was cruising through stuff here in the overflow room and said, Gee, I haven't heard this in ages. And I put it on and whoa, great stuff. It just goes to show, you know, there are so many fine performances of some of this music, of these symphonies now that have become Mahler symphonies and never mind Beethoven and Brahms and those people. There are so many good ones. You can't keep track of them all. And that's why I get to do all these different series, you know, so I can talk about different performances for different reasons and hopefully, hopefully dig them up and bring them back to life. Because, you know, I, just thinking about it, isn't it astonishing how much money and talent and effort, I say this over and over again, was expended on making these recordings over the years only to have them disappear. And for what? Nobody tried to sell them. No one promoted them. Most of us, it was coming so thick and furious in the 80s and 90s, we, didn't, we hardly had time to even listen to them. We would listen to them once, right? If I was a critic, you know, you'd listen to them once, you'd write a review, you'd acknowledge that they existed and move on to the next thing. No time to savor, no time to appreciate the distinctiveness that the artist brought to it. 
It's really kind of sad when you think about it. And so I'm so happy that I have the opportunity to listen to these recordings all over again and give them uh, a little bit of a little bit of love because they really deserve it, especially when you have fine artists like these who are giving their all in, in you know, for a cause that was not not normally what they were expected to do. There's nothing more wonderful than the thrill of the unexpected. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.